All right. Here we go, we're gonna talk about money today. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Katie, otherwise known as The Vintage Academic. I'm a transfer student at UC Berkeley. I'm currently a second semester senior, which means I am mere months away from graduating, which is only a little bit terrifying. <laughs> Anyways, in today's video, I wanted to chat a little bit about money, the cost of going to UC Berkeley, how much money I get in terms of financial aid, how much tuition costs, what I pay in rent to live in the Bay Area. We're gonna cover all of it. Well, maybe not like, the super specific details about my bills, but you're gonna get a general sense for how much it actually costs me to go to school and live in the Bay Area. Before we actually fully jump into the money part of things, there is a little bit of background information that you should know that is important for understanding where I am financially and how I finance going to a school like UC Berkeley. I do actually come from a relatively challenging economic background. My dad died when I was 12 years old, so I grew up with a single parent income and living in California is very expensive, as I'm sure most people know. So I basically came at college having to pay out of pocket, not having any money saved up for college. I am a California resident, meaning that when I go to a California college, regardless of it's a community college, a CSU or a UC, I receive what's called in-state tuition, which I'm sure anybody watching this video knows in-state tuition is far, far less expensive than out-of-state tuition. <laughs> in terms of background, we should also talk a little bit about community college and how much that cost me. When I went to community college, either I paid for my community college tuition out of pocket or some of my family members helped me pay for community college. At the same time, I was also living at home so I didn't pay any rent. I had a full-time job which helped me pay for tuition and bills and gas and food, etc. I honestly don't remember like the dirty, dirty details about the cost of my community college, but it was about $45 per unit if I'm recalling correctly. I took 92 units over the course of six years. So I think that comes out to about $4,000 that was spread out over the six years that I was in community college. Now, because I went to community college, this means that I had two years worth of education that was subsidized and was not nearly as expensive as it would have been had I gone straight to UC Berkeley. Basically, with this background information, I just want you to know that I come from a challenging economic background. I've aged out of having to report my mother's taxes on my FAFSA, and I also went to community college, meaning that I did not spend the same amount in tuition as I would have had I gone to UC Berkeley straight out of high school. And those three things are gonna be really important to know as we get into the actual juicy details of what everybody is here for, how much it costs to go to UC Berkeley. <laughs> for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be talking about my finances from the last academic year, so my junior year as a student at Berkeley, fall 2020 to spring 2021. So for the last academic year, my junior year, I paid about $19,000 in tuition and fees. Yeah. Now that might sound a little bit high, but I chose to use the student health insurance that is offered by UC Berkeley since I am 26 years old and I aged out of my mother's health insurance this year. So normally it wouldn't be that high, but because I am on the health insurance plan, I had to pay a little bit extra. But out of that approximately $19,000, I have paid zero dollars out of pocket. This is because UC Berkeley, like many of its UC sisters, tries its best to give as much financial aid opportunities to its students as possible. In fact, it's one of the reasons why I chose UC Berkeley. They gave me one of the best financial aid packages out of the other UCs that I got into, including UC San Diego and UCLA. Through the information that is available on my FAFSA, the university determined that I was eligible for like the maximum amount of financial aid you can receive without being considered for merit scholarships. So now that you guys know how much it cost me to go to Berkeley, why don't we talk a little bit about my financial aid, as well as what they call the expected cost of living. In my financial aid breakdown, they estimated that it would cost me about $15,000 in housing and food, and that's going to be really important once we talk about the total financial aid that I received. So now that you know that, let's take a look at what my financial aid actually looked like. I received $36,900 in financial aid. This consisted of the California grant, the Pell grant, money from Berkeley, including some emergency relief funding from the pandemic pandemic, and one small loan that's about $5,500 a year, so $11,000 in total. So yes, I will be graduating with some small student loan debt, but that's beside the point. So you might be like, whoa, okay, she paid $19,000, why are they giving her $36,000? And the reason is that housing and food estimation that the university calculates into what you're going to receive in terms of financial aid. That housing and food is obviously meant to go towards things like rent and paying your food and paying your utility bills and things that you need in order to live. <laughs> 
For me, because the first two semesters of my education at UC Berkeley were online due to the pandemic, I chose to stay home living with my mom, paying minimal rent and paying minimal bills. And I ended up saving just enough money to cover all of like the security deposit and first and last month's rent on the place that I'm currently renting right now. And I just wanna to touch on that because the pandemic and living at home during the pandemic is one of the reasons why I was able to do what I did and live in a studio apartment in the Bay Area by myself. But I just wanted to touch on that so you guys know like my situation was very unique. But now that we've explained that, let's talk about the cost of living in Berkeley. Now Berkeley thinks housing and food for an academic year, which is about nine months, should cost around $15,000. I don't know about you, but my rent is $17.50 a month, which if you multiply it by nine months, comes out to about $15,000. This doesn't include the fact that I also paid the rent for my apartment over the summer, which is not included in the estimated cost of attendance, and the fact that I spend about one to $300 in groceries every month, as well as my electrical and Wi-Fi utilities bills, things like that. And this is where, despite the fact that I've received a lot of financial aid, having two jobs has been really important in how I pay for Berkeley. Now I know not everybody has the ability to work through college, but since working while in college is really important to how I pay my bills, I did want to talk about it. So I technically have three jobs right now and I had one job over the summer. I was working for the Forest Service, but I was also technically working for AmeriCorps, which after the end of your term of service, you receive an educational award, which was basically like a little scholarship that they give you on top of the income that you're earning. My other jobs consist of a little office job that I've had ever since I graduated high school. I work once a week on Fridays. It's basically enough to cover my grocery and utilities bills. Then the big important meaningful job that I have is working for none other than Kaylin Grace Apple or the Red Hood Academic here on YouTube at her two companies called Accepted Consulting and Accepted Society. At Accepted Consulting, I'm the head of the transfer admissions office where I get to help transfer students through their own transfer process and find their way to their dream universities. But anyways, what I make from Accepted Consulting and Accepted Society goes towards other things like my savings account, unexpected bills. I'm definitely rambling in this video, so let's go ahead and just now that you have the entire background of how much it costs me to go here, how much it costs me to live here, and what my jobs look like, let's just do a quick summary of the numbers. I receive about $37,000 in financial aid. That covers my tuition and my rent. My rent is $17.50 a month. Tuition costs me about $19,000. And then I have two and a half-ish jobs that pay the rest of my expenses. Hopefully all that information made sense. I know I'm a little bit all over the place right now, but that is like the basic breakdown of tuition, financial aid, and then how much I spend in terms of rent and cost of living. So now that you guys have those numbers, let's take a little detour and talk about some tips for paying for college. We all know that college is incredibly expensive in the United States and it's really expensive in California, and not only is attending university in California expensive, but living in California is expensive. So I want to do my best to share the information that I know of to help you figure out how to pay for college. First of all, I have to say that the way I manage finances is not a perfect system. I'm actually not that good with money and I blame ADHD, but I generally know that my financial aid covers my tuition, it covers my housing, and whatever else I make goes towards my bills and my savings. It's not an exact science and it probably never will be, but I always manage to make it through but this means that I don't really have good advice for creating and sticking to a budget because my ADHD would never let me do that in the first place but I do have some other things to say some other tips and strategies that might help you out so if you're looking for a budget this isn't the video for you but keep listening for other tips number one and if you're surprised that I'm gonna say it then you don't know me at all and you haven't been watching my YouTube videos but it is to go to community college in community college you can save tons of money for the same education. Even though I technically didn't like save any extra money, like I didn't put the difference in the cost of tuition be between community college and UC Berkeley into my savings account, it does mean that I did not have to take out excessive loans, which means I am not graduating tens of thousands of dollars in debt. I also spent longer in community college than most people do, which again means I aged out of having to report my parents' taxes on my FAFSA, meaning I got more financial aid options once I got to UC Berkeley. The important thing to remember about community college is that it it is the same education because those courses that you're taking if you're in a transfer agreement program have been accredited to be the same information the same rigor the same level of difficulty as what you'd be taking at a university and a lot of community colleges especially here in California offer like two years of tuition for free that means that you could essentially get half of your college education without having to pay a single cent except for maybe books and transportation but you're not paying anything for tuition 
So I definitely recommend checking out community college, great option, and even if you do have to pay out of pocket, it's going to be significantly cheaper than it is at a university like Berkeley. Tip number two is to apply for scholarships even if you think you don't qualify for them. I've received like three, maybe four scholarships that I did not think that I met the qualifications for. Even though I didn't think I hit every single check mark on their list of like eligibility, I still wanted to shoot my shot and ended up getting those scholarships. So even if you think that you're not fully 100% qualified, don't let that deter you. The worst that they can say is no, but if you don't try, you'll never know and you could be missing out on thousands of dollars worth of free money. Tip number three is to please fill out your FAFSA. Just do it. Even if you think you're not going to receive anything, A, you'll probably be pleasantly surprised, and B, a lot of schools use your FAFSA information in order to consider you for extra financial aid or scholarships. I know Berkeley does this, a lot of UCs do this, I'm sure other universities across the US who use and accept the FAFSA also do this. So please make sure you're filling out your FAFSA and also fill out your FAFSA as soon as possible as like the second that it opens because a lot of aid is first come first serve. So the sooner you fill it out, the better chance of receiving financial aid from the federal government you have. The fourth tip that I have is that if you are in community college, look to see if your community college has a scholarship database. I've gotten a couple of scholarships through my community college because they have a scholarship foundation, and that is definitely a resource that is available to you that most people don't know about and don't think about. So definitely go to your community college's website, go to the financial aid page, and just see if they have a scholarship database, see what you're eligible for, and apply to them. One last thing I want to say before I go, dealing with money is not and should not be a moral issue, okay? I just want to put that out there. If you're really good with money, if you're really bad with money like I am, that doesn't make you a good or a bad person. It's taken me a while to realize this and I still struggle with some awkward feelings around money, but I just wanted to say it, offer up that information in case it's something that you struggle with too. And please feel free to like ask questions or leave any comments that you have in the comments below and we can definitely talk about it. This is a safe space where we can explore these kinds of things together. So I hope that you found this video helpful and informative as you are thinking about applying to universities, either as a freshman or a transfer student. Let me know if you have any questions about anything in this video, if there's anything I can clarify. I know I was a little bit rambly. If there's anything I didn't cover, just drop it all in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer it. But for now, uh, don't forget to subscribe for more UC Berkeley related content and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!